England faces a housing challenge. The National Housing Federation estimates that the overall demand is approximately 340,000 new and improved homes per year. The government has a target to build 300,000 new homes a year by the mid-2020s. Based on current figures, it was estimated that only approximately 170,000 new homes were built in England in 2022. This means that the total number of households in England is expected to rise from 23 million in 2018 to around 26 million in 2040. But there will be significant regional variations in rates of growth. As well as the need for new homes, many existing homes need to be improved or replaced because they are unsuitable or of really poor quality. A report by the National Housing Federation suggests that around 8 million people are living in unaffordable or unsuitable homes. They identified a wide range of issues including homelessness, overcrowding and a lack of basic facilities. These issues are leading to ill health and children missing out on a good start to their lives. In some places the high cost of housing can lead to overcrowding. It's clear that London and the North East lead the way in government spending on housing and community amenities, whilst the South East and South West lags a long way behind. With many people being priced out of the housing market, affordable housing needs to be built. Affordable housing includes homes for sale or rent at what's considered an affordable price for that local area. 140,000 affordable homes need to be built each year to help deal with the current housing crisis, according to the National Housing Federation. One key question is where should new houses be built? Many housing developers are faced with decisions about whether to build on greenfield sites or brownfield sites. Greenfield sites which have not previously been developed are often cheaper to buy and develop, have more space and are attractive to house buyers and modern businesses. Brownfield sites, which were previously developed and usually found in urban areas, already have road networks and infrastructure, although expensive upgrading may be required. A report by the Campaign to Protect Rural England suggested that brownfield land in England should be used to build over 1.3 million new homes. The CPRE charity believes that the development of brownfield land would bring huge economic and social benefits and help to regenerate urban areas. The Mayor of West Midlands even told the CPRE that there is no excuse to destroy the countryside while there's brownfield land available for housing, shops and modern businesses. These places can become thriving, attractive places to live and work, with nature nearby to be enjoyed. One problem is that much of the land is not being used because developers prefer to use greenfield sites. Even when protecting rural areas is seen as increasingly important, councils like Trafford in Greater Manchester have proposed the development of 5,000 new homes, warehouses and roads on Carrington Moss, an area of peatland, woods and agricultural land, despite there being plenty of brownfield land in the area. There are increasing concerns about the rate at which the countryside is being covered, with new housing estates, industrial parks, road networks and shopping centres. Most of this urban sprawl is taking place in the rural urban fringe, areas which were previously providing recreational space and stopping urban areas from merging together. It has been estimated that around 4,000 hectares of countryside is built on each year. This removes woodland, drains wetlands and destroys farmland. There is, however, no easy answer. Rural areas will need to be protected to avoid damage to wildlife and the countryside. But there's not enough brownfield land to satisfy the demand for housing, so there'll need to be sensitive development of the rural urban fringe. The proposed Toodley village development is for a garden settlement on land between Tunbridge and Paddock Wood in Kent. This will be on land which is currently used mostly for agriculture within a rural landscape. Just to the south of the proposed development is the High Weald, a designated area of outstanding natural beauty with opportunities for a range of leisure and recreational activities. This is an area of ancient countryside made up of small mixed farms. The fields are surrounded by hedges and areas of woodland providing the opportunity for wildflowers and animal habitats to thrive. Ridge top paths provide extensive views of the countryside and villages. With most of the buildings constructed using traditional materials and having a distinctive local style. There are over 10,000 hectares of protected land which is seen as internationally important for nature conservation. 
the area attracts increasing numbers of visitors for recreation and leisure, and this adds to the challenge of ensuring the area is managed sustainably. There are, of course, different perspectives about a development such as this. Toodley Village has been planned as a self-contained settlement with distinctive neighbourhoods arranged around the village centre, with one of the key features being the creation of a pedestrian-friendly, walkable community, allowing residents to live more sustainably. Key features include the 2,800 new homes of different sizes and styles that will be built over a 30-year period. These include affordable housing and will suit a range of different family circumstances. There'll be open space provided for allotments, orchards and village greens, as well as facilities for a variety of sports. There'll also be the opportunity to visit more open countryside within the high wheeled area of outstanding natural beauty. Community facilities will include these sporting facilities, as well as healthcare provision, a village hall, as well as nursery, primary and secondary schools. Movement around the village will be via an interconnected network of footpaths, cycle tracks and roads, which will link to Tunbridge and Five Oak Green. There will also be the development of the local road network, with a bypass around Five Oak Green to help manage an increased traffic volume, as well as the development of a new railway station with links to London. The mixed use within the village will incorporate business and leisure opportunities, such as cafes, shops, offices and workshops. These will all provide tremendous employment opportunities. Sustainability is the guiding principle for the Toodley Village development. This is where the settlement aims to manage different social, economic and environmental characteristics in order to meet both the current and future needs of the area. This will include ideas such as access to quality affordable housing and utilities such as water and energy, community facilities, environmental protection, local employment opportunities, all needs met locally, a minimum waste created, recycling opportunities, renewable energy opportunities and sustainable transport systems. More elements of the Toodley Village proposal include a new railway station within a 10 minute walk from anywhere in the village, a cricket club, a solar farm will generate electricity and renewable energy technology will be used throughout the development. The ancient woodland and existing valuable habitats will all be protected. The existing heritage buildings will be preserved and new buildings will be designed to fit in with the local styles of building. A range of housing styles and sizes will be built to attract people of different ages and affordable housing will also be included. A mixture of commercial and community buildings. A traditional village green will provide a meeting and recreational area. The existing water supply infrastructure will be used and drainage systems upgraded. A new electricity substation will be built. No development will be allowed on the floodplain. There are significant concerns about the development, particularly that the large amount of housing will have a detrimental impact on the local area, creating an urban sprawl between Tunbridge and Paddock Wood. It was also suggested that the development will create much more traffic on already congested roads. It was suggested that there are sustainability issues because some facilities and infrastructure will only open when a certain number of houses have been built. This may not be for many years as the project is likely to take 30 years to complete. An example of this is the railway station which will only be built once 1900 houses have been completed. This will mean that prior to the station being built there will be much more traffic on already congested roads. There are also concerns about the amount of impermeable surfaces that will be needed, such as tarmac and concrete, which could lead to much more flooding in the area. A local campaign group identified a number of unsuitable or unsustainable features of the project. These include that the existing sewage and electricity infrastructure cannot sustain the development. Local services will be put under considerable extra pressure. The B2017 will experience even more congestion. The new development may well take business away from the nearby villages. Local people will not be able to afford the expensive new housing and this will do very little to help the supply of affordable housing that the local community needs. It will mean that the village will simply become another commuter village for people who work in London. The land is an ancient woodland area that provides open space for recreation by local people. 
All perspectives must be taken into consideration when creating new developments in order to meet England's housing challenge.